Come on, this is my living room. This is your couch. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, everyone. How you doing? I love your couches, and I've only been in Germany about 12 hours, but I love Germany as well. So I know. Did you have a chance to get a schnitzel? I haven't had a chance to get schnitzel, but I uh, basically, when I was younger, my mum was dating a German guy, so we lived in Munich when I was about five. Oh, really? For about six months. That's interesting. But I haven't been back to Germany since, so it's nice to be here. Hey, welcome. Thank you so much. You. Guys, are we excited or something? Well, so those 12 hours, I presume, were very, very um, full of events. Yeah, I, and not as well. I got a couple of hours of sleep. That's uh, always good. I'm in the hotel. But yeah, I definitely think I'm going to try and go out tonight and get some food, some good food. I guess so we can... Any recommendations? I guess we all can recommend to go into the Christmas market. Okay, and where are the Christmas markets? It, you just tell to the taxi driver, tell, take okay. me to the, ta to the Christmas market. Why? Because this is very unique German. Okay. And you can get some blue wine, which is a warm wine with spices in it. Like malt? malt yes, wine, like malt wine. Uh, and then you can just have this special Christmas snacks. It's really good. Like, Sounds lovely. And do they do they run all of December? Yeah. The whole month? Yeah. Amazing. I know, right? And you can get some Christmas gifts as well yeah. for your family. So that's good. We, we don't get cold weather in Australia, obviously, mm -hmm. over Christmas because it's summer. Yeah. So on Christmas, it's always like, do you guys use Celsius or Fahrenheit here? We used to have Celsius, yeah. Yeah, so it's like 40 degrees Celsius. Are on you Christmas. serious? So you go to the beach. So the snow um, melts really fast. I'm not used to like the ice skating and the snow and oh, all that stuff. Oh, okay. So you will, nice. you will love yeah. Christmas market. It's like the, the fairy tale. Yeah. And of course, we're all here because of the Stranger Things. But before we jump to that, I wanted to ask you about your role in Elvis. Yay. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, oh. Like, it's you can watch out there. Like, what an experience it must have been to, to, to play a role and as well to be with the cast like this on the yeah. set. Like, can you tell us anything? Yeah, um, so Baz Luhrmann, he's one of my favorite directors and he's Australian. And I had never really worked in Australia before working on the film. So we shot the film in Australia, Australian director. There was a lot of Australian supporting cast. So it was so nice to actually just be home and be working. Austin, who plays Elvis, is a good friend of mine and he's so talented. And uh, so it's just nice to be around him and be around Baz. And, um, you know, his movies are so full of life and color and the, the sets and the costumes are amazing. And everyone that is working on the set is just the best in their field, you know, whether it be the cinematographer or whoever. Um, and I just came home feeling so inspired every day. I can imagine, you know, you're surrounded with so much talented people, so I guess uh, you kind of absorb what they have, and of, you, of course they absorb you at the same time. It must be really cool to be in this creative environment. Yeah, totally. And we were like shooting 10 minutes from the beach, so I could just go for a surf <laughs> and come straight into set. It was nice, it was very relaxed. Important things in life, you know, yeah. priorities <laughs> first. Important thing. <laughs> All right, I think that we have a lot of questions from our audience. Yeah, so I guess we're gonna jump to that as much as I would love to talk to you, but unfortunately, they <laughs> no, no, I, I, I would love to talk to you as well, and I want to hear the Q and A's as well. So. Let's do that. All right, shoot. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, I'm great. <laughs> Thank great. you. Um, my question is. Uh, who do you think, like, which characters do you think Billy could have been friends with if he had been given the chance to survive season three and maybe be included in the group? And uh, that includes yeah. characters from season four, like Eddie <laughs> or yeah. uh, Argyle. I don't know. What do you think? I honestly think his sister. I know that's a bit deep, but I think if given the opportunity to continue on as a living character in future seasons. I think he obviously had an opportunity at the end of season three having a redemptive arc to make amends with relationships in his life that he had previously not been so good at uh, managing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next one, please. Hi. Uh, 
at first I wanted to apologize about my high bedding, I'm sure not the best speaker. No, it's totally, you don't have to apologize at all. <laughs> uh, my question is, in what kind of uh, movie uh, universe would you be like, for example, Marvel or DC? I have to choose between those two? Um, it's just more. So it's a contentious topic. I don't want to say Marvel and then everyone's like, I love DC or DC and then everyone loves Marvel. Here's what I'm going to say. As an audience member, I'm really excited to see where DC is going in the next couple of years. There's so many amazing Marvel films out there and I really feel like DC... I'm, I'm wanting it to become the best. I'm wanting it to become this amazing, incredible thing with incredible DC movies that are put out every year. So I think that's probably where I'm leaning to, just because I feel like it has a really exciting future in the next couple of years in terms of so many different characters coming to life in, in, in that universe. Thank you. Thank you. Day. You too. Next one, please. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, sorry. Um, my question is, what really would have changed after season two if he wasn't going to get flayed? I don't know. I think I don't. I don't want to repeat myself, but um, or I don't mean to repeat myself. But yeah, I think honestly, the relationship with his sister, mm -hmm. and I think that was really something that obviously bled into season four. It was part of Max's heartache. Yeah. And there's a lot of trauma there, you know, in season, when I joined the show in season two, the Duffer Brothers and I talked a lot about what is Billy's story, not just as the character you see, but the character at home, right? And we created the, the arc, the story arc with his father, having an incredibly complicated relationship with his, um, with his biological father. And then when we started season three, I said to the Duffer Brothers, like, well, what about his biological mother, right? Because I'm interested in, in creating a character, not just off the words off the page, but what's their backstory? Where do they come from? How do they see other people? And creating a fully well-rounded human rather than just a villain. So I think because of that, there was a real thing every season, make amends. So with his father, it wasn't necessarily making amends, but it was figuring out and unpacking what that relationship with it was and how traumatic it was for Billy. And then three, it was the whole biological mother backstory. And then I think season four in some ways was, was at least when I spoke to the Duffer Brothers, was about um, figuring out the trauma and the loss of the sibling dynamic and what Max was going through and mourning the loss of her, of her brothers. You know, so I, yeah, yeah. That's, I hope that answers your question. I feel like I went all over, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next one, please. Hi, my name is Nina, and Hi. my question is, if you had the chance to meet Billy, or what would you say to him? That's a really good question. Um, can I give you a long answer, or do you want a short answer? Because I, I feel like I over talk, so if anyone's bored, and you're like, just move on, just go to the next question. <laughs> Um, so, when I came and joined the show, like I was talking about before, it was a big thing for me with the Duffer Brothers. I said some of the best villains that I've ever watched in movies and television are human beings. They're not just bad to be bad. They're actually multifaceted, multi-layered um, humans. And so with Billy, I, I was bullied a lot in school, which I've spoken a lot about. Um, but the bullies that bullied me, there must have been something going on at home for them. They weren't just coming to school riled up, ready to punch someone or ready to yell at someone or whatever. So when I joined the show with Billy, I said to the Duffer Brothers, he can't just be bad. Like, what's his, his backstory, his, his world? And then we came up with the father in particular, um, his biological father backstory. So to answer your question, if I met him in real life, I would ask him what's wrong. I would ask him what's going on at home if he didn't punch me first. <laughs> um, but that's been a big thing in my life now when I meet a lot of people that I think when I was in high school are the type of people that would have bullied me. I feel like I practice having empathy for those people rather than just going, oh, you're a hor horrible person. Why are you being so mean to me or the people I love? 
right now in my life at least, I try and meet people like Billy and go, hey, I'm gonna give you the time of day. I'm gonna listen to your story. I'm gonna see what's going on in your life because there's probably some pretty messed up things that are happening at home or in your world that are affecting you and why you are the way you are. And that's really what I tried to do with Billy was create a character that felt really well-rounded. I'm going on and on and on. She's like, yes, do answer me a question? Um, yeah, so I think if I met him, that, that would be the conversation because I mean, there are Billies all over the world and there unfortunately is never going to be a day when every Billy in the world just evaporates, right? So it's how do you deal with those in individuals? How can you empathize with those individuals? Even that, if that seems like a crazy thing to do. So that's really been, yeah, I guess what I've been trying to do in my life is, is meet a lot of Billies and try and speak to them. Because when I got to play the character, I was on the other side, trying to create, you know, a real life human being and seeing that we all have our flaws. I have a lot of flaws as well. And I try and improve all the time, but none of us are ever going to be perfect individuals. And that is the end of my answer. Thank you so much. If I can add the... On the side, like this is the, this is the Billy's uh, shield. No, this is how he protects himself with this violence and being just mean from from emotions that are inside of him. No? Well, I think it, it, most of our behavior as human beings, to me, is triggered from fear. So right now, we all have a mask, like a private mask and a public mask. You know, I've got my public mask on at the moment, but we all have different facets of ourselves. And I think getting in, in and unpacking that is why I got into acting, because I'm just fascinated by human behavior, human interactions, why we are the way we are. That's, that's, why, I'm, that's why I'm doing it, that's what i It's also cathartic in there. It's, extra, it's therapy, and, and... You get paid for it. <laughs> totally. And I was saying to someone the other day, it's funny, because as human beings, we all interact and we have our like public face on. Yeah. And we have to interact in a very, uh, you know, socially acceptable way. But on a film set, when you're in a character and the camera's rolling, you don't have to. It's a free space. It's like therapy, but better. You can go into someone else's mind and their character and use that as catharsis, use that as therapy. I'm so lucky that I get paid to do that because so many, you know, it's so tough. It's a really tough industry. And I spent a long, long time trying, but I feel like a happier person for it, you know, getting that therapy. Um, yes. Yeah. Sorry for the side, yeah, but that's... That's all good, sorry, she's good. Hello, I'm really nervous, I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine, I'm nervous too. Go and make two of them. Um, my name is Nessie, and I wanted to ask what your favorite comfort movie is. Like, that's what you... Yeah. Um, I love movies. I live for movies, like, movies are my everything. Um, comfort movies. Look like uh, a guilty pleasure kind of thing, you mean? Like, I love Judd Apatow films when I'm feeling a bit sad. I like watching comedies. Um, I like watching like big, cheesy action films when I'm, you know, when I'm feeling like I need that comfort thing. I also have a sweet tooth, so a comfort movie is usually a com accompanied by a stack of candy or lollies, or whatever you, I, I don't know, what are you going to say here? Lollies, candy, I don't know. Same, same. Sweet? Yeah, sweets. Sweets. Um, so, yeah, I, I find it hard to pick a film, because I love so many, I love so many movies. How are you today? Say again? How are you today? I'm doing good, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Oh, good, well, I appreciate you coming up and asking the question. There's no, no need to be nervous or anything, thank yeah, you. thank you. <laughs> First of all, I wanted to say that I love you so, so much, and I wanted to ask if you could say a few German words. Oh, okay. I don't want to mess this up. I think I... <laughs> yeah, go for it. Oh, oh, but just don't get angry at me if I don't get it right. Uh, could you say Eichhörnchen? <laughs> What is it? Is the laugh because it's so hard to pronounce, or because it's a rude word? What does it mean? It means squirrel. 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 And say it one more time for me. I shan shan. 
Okay, you should get her to say. <laughs> I shin shin. How do you how do you spell it? <laughs> See now I've asked her the real question. E I S A H H O E R M C H E N. I shin shin. Thanks. I didn't mean to put you on the spot and. I just didn't want to butcher an entire language. <laughs> Thank you. German has a lot of vowels and consonants in one word. A lot of consonants together. Hi. Um, Hi. I was wondering, what's your favorite memory about filming Stranger Things? Um, the sauna sequence. Um, that was my favorite uh, favorite period on set and. We, they built the sauna, it was a really small set, and we were in there for like three days, and it was the most intense three days of my life. The director that was directing that block of episodes is Sean Levy, who's obviously a producer, has directed a lot of Stranger Things, really good friend of mine, and he was just, he was just saying, push Billy as far as he can go. Like, how far can he push this character? And I remember after three days when I came out of the sauna, I stripped all the skin off the bottom of my toes from dragging myself across across the floor and I had bruises all over my back and all up my side. I put everything into that scene and um, it's my favorite scene in the show for Billy. And um, I think that's probably my best memory. I mean, there's some nice memories of like, I love shooting at night outside. And there was these nights where we were shooting and fog was just rolling in through the set and felt super moody. Um, so yeah, there was a couple of, yeah, a couple of cool moments. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask you if you would like to play Kiss Mary Kill. What's that? Um, I say three names and you have to say who would you like to kiss, marry or kill. Okay. Um, so first, Karen Wiener. Um, <laughs> then I have to be careful about what I say. <laughs> Then Heather and Nancy. Kill Heather. <laughs> I've got to marry Mrs. Come on. I gotta kiss Nancy, surely. Okay. Yeah. Does that answer it? Yes. Okay. Right. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> First up, thanks for being here, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and I was wondering if you could pick any actor or actress that's sadly already passed away to work with or ask for advice or just sit down and have a chat with. Who'd it be and why? Maybe Heath Ledger? Oh, yeah. Good one, good one. Legend. Thank you. Thank you. She's going behind her. That was my question. How dare you ask that question? I had one question that I can Sorry, go on, go on. Um, yeah, that's my first time here to the Comic Con, so. Awesome. Me too. Yeah. Really? Um, hi, my name is Sophie. I'm 19 years old, so I turned 19 yesterday. Happy so birthday for yesterday. For Thank you. birthday, Sophie. <laughs> so, so, this is my gift, so uh, rest a gift. Awesome. Hopefully, I don't mess it up for you. Yeah. I can do Thank you. Um, I just want to say um, I'm glad that you're here and um, you made my day. And yeah, um, I'm I'm kind of nervous. Sorry. Um, totally fine. Take take your time. Thank you. Um, um, <laughs> you're acting in season three was such a great performance. So I. Thank you, sir. I know. It's all good. Take, take a second if you need. We can chat. I can crack a really bad joke to make you feel better or something. You can try that. Okay. Please. Breathe together as well. Yeah. Breath in. She's out. No, it's fine, Flo. No worries. <laughs> Let's make sure she gets the opportunity to ask her for question. Sure, for sure. We have time. Before we finish. Or is she going to translate? Hi. Are you going to ask her question? Or is she coming back? She'll come back, I yeah. think. Okay. This is super scary. <laughs> um, 
My question was, um, do you have any songs you associate with Billy? Yeah, I was listening to a lot of Jimi Hendrix when I was playing Billy, which I talked a lot about. Not for any particular reason other than it kind of made me feel pretty manic before I would shoot. Um, so for that reason, I mean, all along the watchtower, they joke, like, there was a, there's a lot of Jimi Hendrix songs when I think of Billy and my process to developing the character and getting in character was a lot of Jimi Hendrix um, all the time in my trailer, um, in a, you know, like a headphone on set, one headphone, one ear. Um, just, I don't know, it felt, I remember we had a, um, I'm gonna get the band name wrong, but for Billy's entrance in season two, when he steps out of the car and the camera comes up and up and up and then he looks out of the school, the Duffer Brothers came to me and they were like, look, we're trying to figure out what song we're gonna use for this section. Um, and I had this song called In a Garden of Vida by the Iron Butterflies, I think. So it's a random left, it didn't end up getting used. Um, but when I was a kid, I was into Supernatural. You guys watch Supernatural? A lot of fans here. Now remember in season one or two, Dean has like a shape-shifting episode where he has like another version of himself. And that song was used. And I just remember as a kid being so into that show that I pitched them the song. But it was from the 1960s and they were like, dude, it's 1983 in season two or whatever. They're like, what are you doing? We, we want an 80s song. So I didn't get to use it. Um, but yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you listen to Conan Gray, but... Conan Gray? Conan Gray. Family Line by Conan Gray okay. destroys me from Billy. Okay. In case you know. I'll check it out for sure. You should. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for your question. Thank you. Hey. Uh, hello. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm really well, thank you. Um, I'm Marilyn from Belgium. First of all, it's lovely to meet you. It's lovely to meet you. Um, my question for you was um, if there's a, a television show, television show uh, on, on TV at the moment that you would like to be a part of, or would you like to focus on movies from now on? Um, I like movies at the moment. That's really what I've been trying to bite my teeth into because you could do more movies per year and play all kinds of different characters because they often shoot for shorter periods of time. Um, I'm trying to think, is there a show on TV? I really like Severance on Apple. I don't know if anyone's seen that. I thought it was really smart. Um, and that's probably the best show I've watched this year. But my favorite show of all time is Sopranos. Yes. Um, okay. So it would be my dream. Obviously no fans there of Sopranos. <laughs> Everyone's like, what are you talking about? It's not supernatural. Don't say that word. Um, I, yeah, I really like Sopranos. I've been watching Severance. Yeah, those are kind of my, yeah. Okay, that's sure. a great choice. Okay, thank awesome. you. Thank you. Next question, please. Hi. Uh, Hi. Which song would you listen to if Wagner is chasing you? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great. <laughs> I'm running a bit. I, I, I don't have an answer for you, to be honest. I want to I wanna say something really witty and quick and fast, but I don't have it. And every time I think of Stranger Things, for me and my process, it's Jimi Hendrix. And I know it's so bizarre. And everyone's like, well, that's also not, it's not the 80s. So as well, I think, you know, but Jimi Hendrix for me, any Jimi Hendrix song, pick one, that's it for me. Because I was just listening to the albums on the repeat. But there's a still like, one way or another, yeah. find you, I'm gonna She's got good, you. she's actually gonna suggest all the songs. She's gonna do it. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Hi, my name is Charlene and Hi. I loved watching Power Rangers as a kid. Oh, that's very cool. So seeing you in the film was like very huge and very cool for me. So I wanted to ask you, uh, as a child, did you watch Power Rangers? And if yes, uh, which one was your favorite? I didn't actually watch Power Rangers. No. How crazy is that? No, and so when I met the director, who I actually had known from years before, um, his whole thing was like, you have to get inside this world. So I, uh, I ended up watching a lot of Power Rangers in the lead up to shooting the film. And then we had a lot of the old um, cast come and make 
uh, cameos. I don't, yeah, I think in, there's a post credit sequence where you see a lot of them in the background of the scene, um, and that was really nice. But one of the actors on the film, Ludi Lin, um, he was the biggest Power Rangers fan growing up. So for him, it was just, I feel like all of the cast just drew so much passion and energy off him, and he had gone and studied martial arts his entire life. Um, so he kind of almost in some ways spent his entire life preparing for that role. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm a little bit nervous, but thank That's you for okay. asking. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank Thanks you for, for being here. Um, I think a lot of people are very, very happy for that. My question is, um, what is something you think is um, special for Billy, but we never saw on screen? Something maybe deep inside of him that you want to know, that the people know it. Yeah, I think uh, sensitivity. I think Billy is a very sensitive person, and there's very few opportunities to show that in his life. And I think the private moments, like when his dad leaves the room after he pushes him up against the wall, you know, that's that's the real Billy in that moment, the sensitive Billy. Um, so for me, I had like various different things in my pocket, in my jacket, like things you never see that I always like with every character, I like to have something hidden. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, it's a secret just for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a, a various like uh, notes on paper, um, like little things. I do it for every character. So it, in some ways I feel like Billy's secret as a character was he was sensitive. And then there's the secret that Dako keeps with the character when I'm playing him and when I'm, when I'm acting. Um, thank, you so much. thank you, appreciate it. She's back. She's Guys, there. she's back. She's Everyone so give cool. a round of applause. Yeah. So, uh, my question is now, is there anything that couldn't often see how Billy has Terry eyes uh, why he was possessed by the mind flayer. So my question is, you as an actor, how can you manage to cry just in time? How can I manage to cry just in time? Yeah. <laughs> can you do it now? <laughs> I can't do it now, I'm sorry. And thus, not just in time. She needed me to do it now and I can't do it just in time. I, I, I don't know, like I spent a long time by myself before I go on set. I just, if you imagine, like sometimes they shoot movies in a big hall like this, and they'll build a tiny stage like the size of the seating up there, but the, the rest of the hall's empty. So I'll go and find a little corner or something, you know what I mean, and just spend time by myself, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Well done. Hi, Dega. Hi. I just wanted to ask if you did you add anything to Billy that wasn't in the script? Did you do any embassies? And if you did, do you remember like a specific one? A lot of stuff. A lot, like everything every day was just. I like to bring every director ten options for a, a, a thing that I could do in every scene every day, and. The great thing about the Duffer Brothers and the other directors on the show is they were willing to take those ideas on. Because I, I present 10 ideas and I go, look, if you want to trash all of them, that's fine. But my, my thing is just is, is, is bringing those opportunities. Um, so thankfully the Duffer Brothers were very accommodating, to say the least. Thank you. Thanks so much. Hey, how are you? Hey, buddy, how you doing? Me too, thanks. Uh, good. My question is, do you have the same characteristics as Billy, for example, in the workout style? Say again? The same char char characteristics as Billy, for example, the workout style. Oh, oh the workout style? Yeah. Yeah, I, I train a lot, like Billy, but because I have such bad anxiety, I just go to the gym to release myself of my anxiety every day. That's okay. why I do it. Um, whereas I think for Billy, it was more of a aesthetic thing. Yeah. You know? That is yeah. it, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. I feel tired. <laughs> 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 Hi, 
tiny. <laughs> right, I feel tiny too. Um, I think we're all from different countries around here, so I wanted to ask you what your favorite country is and what country you still like to visit. I mean, Australia is just, well, I returned to Australia after a long time uh, recently. You know when you just walk somewhere, it just, it's home in every way. My family's there, my friends are there. Um, and because it's so far away from everything, it feels so untouched. Uh, Japan is one of my favorite countries in the world. I love Japan. We got someone here, who's screaming? Hey, you Japan, you based in Japan? You love Japan, so do I. I thought they were going to tell me they were born and raised there. Give me a whole backstory. Um, yeah, I love Japan. I love visiting Japan. I love the culture, the food, the people. Um, Tokyo is one of my favorite cities in the world. Um, but yeah, Australia is, you know. Where are you from? I'm from the Netherlands. Okay. And would, and would you say that's your favorite part of the world? Like, do you feel... Um, I really like England and Australia, so oh. I really like to visit one day. Awesome. I like the UK as well. It's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi. Hi, I'm Charity. Hey. Um, I wanted to ask you, what was your favorite thing to do when you was a little child? Watch movies. <laughs> watch movies, yeah? I still do it every day. I try and watch three movies every day. I get up at 5 a.m., I watch a movie. I watch a movie at lunchtime. I watch a movie at dinner. I locked myself in my room when I was a kid, and I just watched TV shows and movies. I didn't play sport. What was your favorite TV show to watch? Um, when I was younger? Yeah. Again, it's all the same stuff. Like when I was younger, I watched a lot of Sopranos, a lot of Supernatural, Smallville, Shield, a lot of like great shows, Walking Dead, you know, um, Walking Dead fans and the Japan fans over there, <laughs> screaming for both. Um, I, yeah, I mean, it's just like movies took me away. Like when I was a kid, I was not very happy. No. And, and movies just were an escape, and that's why I still watch them. I, I'm a happier person, but I love the escape of like putting on a film, and it's like you disappear into that world for that period of time, and that's that's why I love being a part of of yeah. making shows and movies. Um, yeah, it's kind of a lame answer, but that's no, really it's what fine. I did. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, guys, we have time doing. for one last question, so no pressure. <laughs> and the last question for today is for me. What was your favorite scene you filmed in The Stranger Things? I think the sauna sequence. Um, again, it's, it was really my favorite scene, but um, some, some early scenes in season two with Max, you know, were fantastic and, and had just a, a real feeling of like meeting cast for the first time and having a really cathartic experience with those individuals and, and, and those early days of learning how people work, how your co-stars work and what they want to do and how far they want to push you. So that was really more than anything. Season two was exciting because I didn't know how anyone worked or how they chose to behave or act or what they're, were they method actors or were they not, you know, like you just figuring out how people work, and that's my favorite part. I love the early stages, because it's all like fireworks. It's all exciting, and you never know what's around the corner. You know, that's the best part. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Guys, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Gate?